views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. The following audio is via a Skype call. You are listening to the Psychic Professors Show, the Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes. This hit call in show will answer any questions you have about spiritual communication through on air readings and spirit artistry. Get ready to receive breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten your life. To say this show is educational is an understatement. Dr. Susan is the medium through which spirit communication occurs and fills the canvas of your life. I'm Dr. Pat, and I'm here with my co-host today, Dr. Susan Barnes, and guess what? You know, today's show is fasten your seatbelts. That's all all I'm going to say. You know, so here we go, right? Should you ask for a reading from a psychic or a medium? Well, Dr. Susan Barnes is going to help us understand not only the differences, but also how we best use and optimize what we know and what to ask. So I'm thrilled to have her here. She's an international medium communication professor and spirit artist. I love that. I I wanted to be a spirit artist, but that's not mine to do. Um, She is the owner of the Spirit Art Gallery in New York and teaches art regularly. Now today, certified medium trained in the U.S., England, and Canada, member of the Spiritualist National Union and teaches there. And today she is joining us to kick off this amazing show. And why not start with the conversation of what the heck is a psychic or a medium? Dr. Susan, it's great to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So, you know what? Many, many people don't even ask this question. You know what I mean? That don't even ask. Oh, I know. Because, yeah. Yeah. T- tell me why. Why don't we ask? The term <laughs> in the United States, I mean, I think it's a little bit different in England, but in the United States, the term psychic and medium are kind of used synonymously, although they're two totally different processes. And so tell us about the process. Okay. The difference is basically this. Um, A medium is someone who's going to communicate with um, a departed loved one, a deceased spirit. So they get a spirit connection and get their information from that spirit that they're going to tell the person um, in a reading. Now, the psychic in contrast, is getting their information from the person. They are actually reading the person's aura and getting information off of them, and they're not communicating with a Mm. spirit. Mm. You know, I I think many folks want want, want to know, wait a minute, I, I am really, really somewhat interested in this. And the question really, it really becomes... I want to know that when I'm working with someone, that I am understanding that they are truly communicating. And and because of that, there may be some guidance that I'm going to get. Um, Can can you talk about this? Because let's start out with what is a medium. And most folks are like, oh, I know what a medium is. That's a psychic. And I don't know that they're going to be right with that. (laughs) Well, I mean, the first thing, this is the first thing. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're looking for information about your love life, you want to go to a psychic. If you're looking to talk to Aunt Ruth or Uncle Harold, then you're going to go to a medium because a medium's going to bring through um, relatives and people from your family. So if you're not interested in hearing from anyone in your family, go to a psychic. But if you want to communicate with grandma, go to a medium. Yeah. So uh, do do mediums know what, for example, I'm thinking? Are they going to know? Oh, yeah, I know what you're thinking, Pat. You know, I love that question. I can't tell you how many people 
have run away from me when they found out I'm a medium because they think I can read their mind. Oh. Um, yeah. Also, a lot of men don't want to go to public services if they're having affairs or things like that because they think the medium's going to, you know, out them, it knows this stuff. No, we don't read people's minds. What we do is we try to connect with the spirit world so that we can tune in to a spirit entity or person, and that person's going to give us the information. You know, I can tell you firsthand why this is now important. And now, when you and I first started to talk, I didn't have this information. Um, but I'll tell you that right in my own house, not too long ago, you know, when Linda was visiting, we were sitting, you know, sitting in the living room and heard a giant crash, a crash, right? And mm -hmm. didn't know what it was. Go in the bedroom and uh, a lamp that wasn't even on was a Chinese lamp that Linda's mother gave me. She's passed. Somehow, Dr. Susan jumped off the dresser. I mean, literally jumped over something glass that was there, something else that was there, which didn't break, ended up on the floor, broke the base. And when we walked in and looked at that, both of us said, how did that happen? It had to be Joan. Now, I don't know if that was a giant leap or not, but you could see that for us, um, we start to think like that a little bit, right? Um, that's not a giant leap at all. I mean, I think, no, not at all, especially if that was your first thought. You know, yes. I find that, you know, if the first thought is, oh, that must be Uncle Joan or Ann or whoever. Um, mm -hmm. That's who it really is. But the other thing, and this is a little more of an advanced topic on mediumship, mm -hmm. but um, there is a lot of what we call physical phenomena that happens every day, and people just don't notice. Mm. So there's things, oh, I'll give you an example, and I still haven't found them yet. My car keys disappeared from my pocket. Happened to my friend on Sunday. His car keys disappeared from his pocket. He found his. I still haven't found mine yet. And you know what? I probably will find them, but they're not going to be anywhere near where I lost them. Wow. These types it's, of things happen every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not unusual. I mean, lights turn on. People have. That's a frequent one that people have told me that all of a sudden lights will go on in their house or, or off in their house. Yeah. And they know it's a spirit. Yeah. I mean, this was such a, I, I, I mean, you had to be in the bedroom to see that there was nothing that fell down that could knock this lamp off that nothing, not even close to it. Um, it, it I mean, it literally jumped off the dresser. And we now know probably to get Linda's attention in some way. But the, I would love for you to talk about this because we're talking about the ways mediums communicate too. And folks may not know that the keys missing, the lamp jumping, are, 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 are folks from the other side trying to communicate with us or is that in our mind? No, I, th I think that lots of times when it happens, you're trying to get, they're trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the common one for me is that lots of times when a parent has died, someone will say, he always brings me dimes or he always brings me pennies. Yes. And they'll find, yeah, they'll find coins in places where coins shouldn't be. You know, and yeah, that's. Yes. 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 That's them just letting you know that they're there with you. I mean, once someone passes over to the other side, they're still with you. You know, yeah. they're there to give you comfort and to help you. Yeah, I, w Linda and I were talking about this, you know, not too long ago. And I said, you know, Linda, don't you find it odd that I'm always finding pennies with heads up? 
I mean, don't you find it odd that you, you know, and, and we were talking about this because that's what Joan would do. You know, she would talk about, you know, uh, 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 saving your pennies, but she had this heads up perspective. I think it's odd that just about every penny that I find or look down and find is heads up. The odds of that are uncanny, but yet at the same time, I may not stop long enough, Dr. Susan, to ask the question, hmm, wonder what you're trying to say. Can you talk a little bit about how that might go? Well, I mean, I think that when those types of things happen, mm-hmm. then the spirits are just really reminding you that they're there and they love you. I mean, I yeah. think that's the message. I mean, yeah. if you want a different, if you want a more detailed message, then you might want to go to a medium for a reading because Mm -hmm. um, there may be more information coming from your mother or your father or someone on the other side. Um, And that's going to come out in a mediumship reading. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually the way it it, it works, I'm I'm just going to talk about the short reading, is that you you get uh, uh, a relative and you have to get information that is enough information for you to know who it is. That's the first thing that um, if you're going to tell whether somebody's real or not is that you've yeah. got to have enough evidence. They can't ask you questions. They can't say, oh, who is this to you? Or, or is your mom in spirit? Is your dad in spirit? They have to tell you the information. They have to yeah. say, you know, I have your father here in spirit. And then describe your father with some characteristics that you can identify after that, they can start getting into a message, you know, like your father's here. He's um, really wants to tell you that what you're doing on the radio is having a positive, you know, impact on things. You know what I'm saying? There there will be a message coming out. Wow. Uh, how did, I mean, we learned a lot or maybe didn't learn a lot from the movie that came out called Ghost. You know, clearly that whole presentation, I think, raised the bar on folks' awareness, albeit some of it <laughs> probably not not very accurate. Um, do mediums only communicate verbally? Uh, I mean, t- are there different ways that mediums communicate? Yes, yes. There's two basic different types of mediumship. One is mental mediumship. That's where you go and you'll get a reading from someone. Under mental mediumship, there's also a a topic called trance, where the medium will give their consciousness over to a spirit and the spirit will speak through them. Um, That's the part of of mental mediumship. There's also physical mediumship and all the things we were talking about with the pennies and all that stuff that falls under physical mediumship and physical mediumship is the seances and when you see the tables lifting and all that kind of stuff that's a physical phenomena now mediums can communicate in different ways and i'll just give you two two basic examples most of us are familiar with the mental mediumship where the Mm -hmm. medium connects with the spirit link Mediums can also communicate through objects, for example, table tip. And in table tipping, what will happen is that you'll, you'll ask the table, show me yes, show me no. And then if it taps, sometimes the tapping will tap on out letters of the alphabet. So the person will be identified that way. Yeah. And, you know, you and I, we've got so much to talk about. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're also going to be opening up the phone lines here. When we come back, okay, if that's what a medium is, well, then what's a psychic? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Dr. Susan Barnes is in the house. Go to spiritartgallery.net. When we come back, uh, we'll be opening up the phone lines as well as finding out what a psychic is. And then most importantly, when, why, and how do I consult with one or the other? We'll be right back. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. 
Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong for the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease we are not going to let you down we're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio the message will continue the conversations will become stronger and the healing epic are you ready to start winning at the game of life Lynn Brown host of get into it winning at the game of life is here to help you reach places and goals that you never thought possible. Lynn is an intuitive healer with a specialized background in financial healing. She combines her intuitive nature and her wholesome approach to financial planning. To learn more about her financial planning services, contact her personally at letter R, letter U, intuit.com. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Tune in to the Psychic Professors Show, The Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes on Transformation Talk Radio. Featuring a variety of spiritual topics such as psychic art, spiritualism, EVP, psychic development, and mediumship. This hit call-in show provides listeners with breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten their lives. Visit spiritartgallery.net for show days and times. I love this psychic professor show with Dr. Susan Barnes, the voices of spirit radio. We are talking about what should you ask for a reading from a psychic or a medium and guess what we are doing. We are opening up those phone lines for all of you out there. Uh, Question is, would you like to connect with a loved one? 1-800-930-930. 2819. Mr. Benny is going to take the calls. 1 800 930 2819. If you want to find out more about Dr. Susan Barnes, really easy, really, really easy to do. Go to spiritartgallery.net. Wow. Okay. Dr. Susan, I got to tell you, we talked about what is a medium. And the question now becomes, what does it mean to be a psychic? Now, the first thing you have to realize is that every medium is a psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. Okay. But, oh, yeah. And I guess the best example I did, I had two women come up to me um, for readings, and one looked at me and said, Um, I want a medium mystic reading, and the other one said, I want a psychic reading. And I knew exactly what was going on. The woman who wanted the medium mystic one wanted to connect with her deceased son. The um, woman who wanted the psychic reading wanted to know about her love life. Um, So if you're looking for things about your job, about your husband, about your life, you go to a psychic. And a lot of the psychics do act as kind of life coaches, helping mm-hmm. people with issues um, within their daily lives. 
Um, the medium, again, is, is not going to do that. The medium is going to go try to find a relative for you to bring you a message. Yeah. You know, I, I'm so glad we're talking about this because, um, you know, when somebody says, I just want a reading, and then they find someone that they connect with only to discover that the reading they thought they were going to get or the session that they thought they were going to get wasn't exactly what they thought they were going to get. And I think what you're doing today, Dr. Susan, is you're really, you know, providing some very important educational information for people um, to be able to know what do I do and when do I do it? Now, listen, let's talk about psychic. You know, what does it mean to be a psychic for a moment uh, for people listening? You, you know, what do we then bring, right, um, to a psychic, if we go to, if we go to someone that says, I, I'm a psychic, can you tell me about my mom who passed away? Um, tell me about how that works and what type of questions do I ask a psychic? Well, you're going to ask a psychic, um, mm -hmm. should I change jobs? Yeah. You know, am I going to find a boyfriend next week? Yeah. Um, you know, Anything to do with, I'm having a problem with this girlfriend. Um, what do you, you know, can you help me with that? Or I'm having an issue with that, with something in my life. Um, so that the psychic can help you with all of those different types of questions. Um, mm -hmm. and the psychic isn't going to necessarily connect with your mom or your dad or your uncle and spirit. They don't need to, you know, but they will give you advice and help with your, with your daily life. I mean, it's funny for me. What what happens with my readings is lots of times I'll I start psychic because I come in and I tell the person something about themselves, and that's just to get my energy in tune with them more. And then I'll tell them what relative is there, waiting for them to talk to them. You know, and sometimes there's more than one relative. You know, it all depends. Yeah. I mean, and, and this is really, um, you know, for folks, uh, there might be more than one relative. I mean, you know, some folks have uh, uh, moms and then, you know, aunts that are together. Um, how do you figure this out? I mean, I, I'm kind of asking a very naive question, but I really do want to know. I'm trying to imagine myself being you. <laughs> It's really hard to do, actually. But, I, I mean, there's just might be a lot of information to try to sort through. And tell me a little bit about how how you specifically ha have have studied to, to really sort through it all. Oh, well, I've been studying for, for many, many years, and every person's different. So what's true for me is not going to be true for another medium. Mm. Um you know, for example, some people get names real easily. I get relationships. Um, and it's just, I guess, the way I've, I've practiced my mediumship. A lot of it has to do with trust. You know, when people are just starting out, they they try to outthink themselves. Oh, I feel this, but I'm not sure. And they won't say it. And what I learned fairly quickly was that if I got an inkling, oh, it's a brother, um, say it. And I would say, mm -hmm. oh, I feel a brother here. And then they would give me more information and more information and more information. I mean, occasionally you're not right. Occasionally you're wrong, you know, but then when you are wrong, you um, need to go back to the spirit and say, okay, they're not understanding what you're saying. Please explain it more. Or give me an idea. And then something that's a no does usually turn into a yes. You know, wow. it's like, you know, I talk about your brother. Oh, okay. It was really your sister that passed, but um, your mother wanted a son or something, you know, and there's a reason for it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, the messages uh, are, are the messages. And what I hear you saying is that, you, you know, at least my experience is sometimes the messenger can be pretty persistent. And, and and I think that what you help all of us understand is how to be more aware. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a mistake that I will say I can't remember the last time, Dr. Susan, that I actually found a petty, a penny with the tails up. 
I can't even remember when that was. Um, so I know now after time and time again that I stop and I ask, hmm, I wonder what the message is. But honestly, I don't know the right thing to ask. Can you help me here? Well, I don't know. I mean, is there a question you're trying to ask? I mean, I think that, you know, I mean, this is a positive type of thing that's happening. You're seeing the pennies. And I would ask you, what were you doing when you saw the penny? I mean, were you oh. on your way to a meeting? Were mm-hmm. you going somewhere? Then that would be an indication to me that you're on the right path. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I love that you said that because I I am probably one of those people I second guess myself more times than I can imagine. And I think the older I get, uh, Dr. Susan, the more I'm second guessing myself about stuff. And so probably um, those pennies are in direct, <laughs> direct proportion to how many times I ask myself, wow, am I really doing the right thing in the world? Right. Um, right. And then there's a penny. And then it's a penny. And it may not be that blatant. It may be like me procrastinating about something, right? You mm-hmm. know, that's another form. And the penny is like, oh, come on, girlfriend, get on it. Get on it. That's right. Get on it. Um, really interesting. When I was a young kid, my stepmom uh, was somebody that was amazingly resilient. Had her first child at 12, second one at 13, right? And mm-hmm. taught me about perseverance. And here's here, here, we're gonna I'm gonna share this and we'll take a short break and come back. All of us got these pogo sticks when we were a kid. Pogo sticks are these things you jump up and down on, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Yep. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, didn't want to do it, hated doing it. And my mom said, you are not coming in the house till you master that. Lo and behold, I finally did. It took me hours, hours of just staring at it, totally resisting. Nope, I'm not going to do it. You can see me, right, Dr. Susan, doing something Mm -hmm. like that. Right. Finally, I gave in and I started to jump on it and jump on it. And I was able to do it. From that point on, you couldn't get me off of it. We're, we're strategizing and designing yeah. the network, designing the network. And I was on the fence as to one of the 10 channels. I'll tell you what it is. The channel was the God Talk channel, which is now part of what we're launching. Imagine a network with psychic talk, green talk, and God talk. So I went to a place of fear and I accidentally, Dr. Susan, accidentally, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it, accidentally clicked on something and out of the blue came extreme championship pogo jumping. Let's take a short break because I want to hear what Dr. Susan has to say about that. And what was then my answer? When we come back, we're going to the phones. 1-800-930-2819. If you'd like to call in, we have opened up the phone lines for you to connect with Dr. Susan Barnes. Get yourself a reading and much more. We'll be right back. Tune in to the hit show, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at thedrpatshow.com. 
Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the RAD Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com, that's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206 9 the earth is an ever-changing being goddess light shamanic healer brie gibbs guides us through the ascending worlds bringing forth knowledge and truth as a light creator she is here to provide new information needed at this time in our evolution join brie as she shares messages from guides spirits ascended masters goddesses and others Tune in the second and fourth Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, and Thursdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, for Silver Gaia Radio. Have you wanted to make more money without working harder or more? Maybe you've tried new ways to bring in extra income without success. Hi, my name is Deb Acker, and in addition to being the host of Truth Talk Radio, I'm an intuitive life coach and energy healer. I clear energy blocks to all areas of life, including abundance. Did you know many times we have an invisible income ceiling? So no matter what we do, our income never goes up, or if our income does go up, we experience an unexpected expense that negates this. How much would it be worth to significantly increase your income or even have unexpected income show up? When I was in the corporate world, I used these techniques to increase my income by tens of thousands of dollars without changing my work routine. In fact, I worked even less, and I now help clients do the same. If this resonates for you and you're truly ready for abundance in your life, I'd love to gift you with my pattern identification session. Simply contact me on the contact page of my website, deborahacker.com. That's D-E-B-O-R-A-H-A-C-K-E-R.com. And let me know you heard about this gift through Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to connecting soon. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're taking your calls. 1-800-930-2819. Please give us a shout. Um, You know, uh, Dr. Susan Barnes is in the house for those of you out there. And again, I want to mention, you can find out more about her at spiritartgallery.net. For a minute, let's just take a moment if we could. Can you tell us about, you know, what kind of events, what things you're going to be involved in here and uh, let folks know? I mean, you're involved in a lot of things. I know you're speaking. I know you're doing a lot of, uh, of things. Just give our listeners an idea of what some of those might be. Yeah, well, we do different types of events. For example, we're doing an introduction to sound healing. On April 27th, we have it's t- the Tibetan bowls where they they ring the bowls and these bowls have healing energies. They're really great. I've done it. Um, it's very very healing. Um, we will be in the middle of June. We're going to be starting um, our art classes back up again. And by the way, I could make you a spirit artist. I mm. I can make everybody a spirit artist. So anyway. We, we have the art that's coming up, and we have, of, of course, we always have Shannon Taggart's photographs. Shannon mm. um, photographs seances. She's been doing it for 15 years. So we have these amazing pictures of ectoplasma and different phenomena here that she's shot. Wow. So we do a lot of different things. Jeff, you just check well, the website for what we're, we're up to. I love it. You know why I love that? Because, you know, for me, I didn't study to be an artist. And I went through certain periods of my life, Dr. Susan, where out of the blue, and I mean out of the blue, I get these appetizer forks at a white elephant, thousands of them. And I immediately knew I was going to create these beautiful goddess heads with them. Mm. And all of a sudden, I was making them. Now, I don't make them anymore. It's kind of I went through this period. I wanted to ask you about this, and I also talked about the pogo stick. It's taken me a lot of years to figure out that maybe a message is trying to get to me. Maybe. But I'm not really sure how to be more mindful on a regular basis, and I've learned that I sometimes have to consult the psychic or a medium. So can you talk about two things? One, 
what did you think about my little pogo stick story? And then number two, how can I make it easier on myself and get some information quicker? <laughs> well, first, let's deal with the pogo sticks. Um, All right. It's really funny. The pogo stick story, when I first heard it, um, the first thing I thought was the story you told me about the, what your mother had taught you. Um, that's the lesson right there. Lots of times they'll bring something to your mind that'll remind you of a situation and just think about that situation and there's your message. I mean, the idea was be resilient, do what you want to do. You can do it. It's going to be successful. Um, you were successful with a pogo stick and the other part of the message would be, do you remember how you told me that once you got on the pogo stick, you yeah. stayed on the pogo stick and, and oh, yeah. you were very active with it? So yeah. what they were telling you is that you're going to do this and it's going to it's going to be a great success and you're going to get a very positive response from people. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's what the pogo sticks um would tell me. But I would just say in general, the first thing I would say to you and I would say to anybody is try not to second guess yourself. And I mean, yeah. if something positive is happening, then just accept it. And be grateful for it. I mean, the more the more grateful people are, the more positively they think, the better their lives work. Yeah, I, I want to talk about fear. I, I don't know why I want to talk about fear right now. Um, I, 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 I believe that there is this level of fear that is driving folks right now in many, many ways. You know, fear of not earning enough. Fear of not having a pension, fear of not having this, fear. fear. And I've had more people, Dr. Susan, talk with me about what they're afraid of in the past three months than I think I've had in the past 10 years. How does, you know, and, and I think we then seek out help. We seek out, you know, answers. You know, what if you find in the work that you do, what if you find, do people come, in, you know, to you and, and want to work with you because they're just inquiring? Or do you find there is like a major um, catalyst kind of pushing them forward? Well, so the first thing I want to do, I'm going to jump back to my communication days. And yeah. I'm going to tell you that the media is filled with fear. So this whole idea of fear is something that we encounter on the news and we encounter um, every day through the media and the stuff that, that we interact with. Um, fear is the worst thing. I mean, it's what stops people from doing things. It's what stops you from progressing and moving forward. Uh, I mean, one of the challenges for me personally is to try to get rid of the fear in my life. You know, mm. what? why should I be afraid of it? What's going to happen? Sometimes I think, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? Mm. You know, if I say, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? Okay, um, I could lose my job. Yes. And then what would I do? Right. Well, I know me, I'd find some way to make money. I, I would survive. So why should I be fearful of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so fear is something you want to try to get rid of. Yeah. And, you know, it's really interesting because um, I read a book way back and it was called Fear the Fear. Oh, sorry. Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And that literally became my mantra for a really, really long time. Um, feel the fear and do it every anyway, because a lot of times we don't allow ourselves to feel the fear. And then when we do feel the fear, what happens is we want to create, feel the fear, live the fear, be the fear. That's not going to take us down a path that we want to go, is it? No, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. not at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's again, it, 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 and it sounds simple, but it's not. Um, you have to just try to be as positive as you can. And I mean, when I say that, just think in your own life. Um, how many things, I mean, people are petty. People will go, you know, little stupid things um, they'll be negative about. But if you get rid of all that, if you get rid of all that garbage, and it is, mm -hmm. it's like getting rid of the garbage, um, your life will be much better. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I, I would love for you to talk a little bit about um, how people, right? How, what is the best way for folks to seek out um, a psychic or a medium? And what I mean by that is, you know, there are clearly some things that you, you've learned over time and you teach people. Um, the other thing also is that you you also help people understand how to make good choices around this. What have you learned? What are you teaching with? What are you teaching the folks? Well, the first thing and then we'll go is, to the phones. Yeah. The first thing is that um, you have to use your intuition. I mean, if you, you we always tell people get a get a sense, you know, how do you feel about it? If you if, you, if you're if you see some name and you kind of feel no, that's not right, um don't go with it. I mean, if you do see another name that's in for some reason it will just pop out at you or or um People, I mean, I had a woman who called me once because Spirit gave her my name. Mm. And, <laughs> yeah, I, literally. So, and she was from California. So, um, but you do, you have to use your own inner sense about it. But also, when you go to a medium, it, find out if you're not connecting with that medium within the first few minutes, like first five minutes of a reading, tell them because they're supposed to stop the reading and give you your money back. Oh, wow. Which most people don't know. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. If if you're not connecting with a medium and they're not, they're not, and you know if you're connecting or not, um, then tell them we're not connecting. And sometimes the medium can't read somebody or the psychic can't read someone. So they're supposed to be honest enough to say, you're yeah, right, I can't read you, so here's your money back. Try a different medium. Awesome. Let's do this. We have somebody that wants to talk with you. Mr. Benny, who do we have first? Donna from Seattle. Welcome to the show. Donna. Hi. How are you? I want you to meet my I'm friend, good. Dr. Susan Barnes. Hi, Donna. Hi, Dr. Hi, Dr. Susan. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Wonderful. I just I'm um, so grateful to be here talking with you. And um, they asked me who I wanted to talk to on the other side, and my first thought was Steve, my favorite person who's passed over. But um, I I would like to talk with him. But I also am wondering if I could reach Connie, a friend of mine oh, okay. who died in. September. Okay. Now, I have to tell you something um, interesting. Generally, you can't ask a, a medium for a specific person. Or if the medium tells you that they can reach a specific person, don't believe them. Because we always have to say that sometimes these spirit entities are are not available um available in the spirit world, so you can't guarantee that, that you you can read for someone. However, there are some mediums like myself who are actually, I'm pretty good at, at getting to a lot of the people people want. But again, I have to warn you that it may come through, it may not. The way I work it is this, and I do sense, you have your friend Connie? hmm You have two passed? I'm feeling she passed from an illness, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm also feeling it may have been a cancerous type condition. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. See, that's what I have to do. I'll get, uh, if I get the person, I'll have to start giving you information. And if you confirm the information, um, then I know I'm with the right person. So, yes, I do feel your friend Connie is here um, because what she's telling me is that you were very, very helpful to her towards the end of her life. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Um, she She's telling me she's coming through because she wants you to know that she was just so appreciative of the care and the kindness and the love that you showed her toward the end of her life. And I also feel that she may at times have not been... Um, 
was. That at times she may have been, I want to say, difficult. She, that she wasn't completely there. She couldn't express herself. That's what I want to say. She couldn't really tell you how much you meant to her and how appreciative she was of all the things that you did. Um, and so that's what she's trying to tell you from the other side. That's nice. Does that Thank make you. sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also feel that you did some things for her family as well. Yes. I am yeah, that's doing that now. Yes, that's what she's telling me. She's telling me that there's something that, that you're helping the family, that since she's passed, um, there have been some issues and some things that need to be cleaned up, is what she said, cleaned up, and that she's um, thanking you for that as well. Okay. Okay. Does she have um, any... Um does she have any direction or any preferences that I should be taking because it's just a little complicated? What she's telling me is that she's telling me that sometimes when they tell you different things, you get a feeling of what feels right and what doesn't. Is that correct? I, I definitely have a feeling of what feels right and what doesn't, yeah. Yes. And so what she's telling me is that go with your instinct that feels right. And she's saying okay. that there may be some people in the family that are going to resist it and not um, agree with you in the beginning, but that in the end, it'll all work out. Okay. Okay. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Well, Donna, how do you feel about that? Uh, it. You know, I might just cry, but it um, mm. feels really good to have that confirmation because I'm helping her son, who's the executor, and uh, her daughter is challenging. And uh, I'm a real estate broker, and I didn't know if I wanted to proceed in that uh, way in this situation. But when she says, in the end, it'll all work out, that's fine. I'm good. Oh, thank you. Thank you yes, so I, very much. Yeah, go ahead. And I go just ahead. wanted to, to know that her friend Connie's with her, looking over her thank shoulder. Thank you. Mm. I had a feeling, but I just kind of wanted confirmation. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Donna. Um, Mr. Benny, uh, let we have time. Let, let's bring on our next caller, Linda from New Jersey. Welcome to the show, Linda. Hi, how are you? Hi. Did you hear us Hi, talking Susan. about the lamps? No, I missed that, but I'm probably glad that I did. But I do have a question about the lamps. Um, <laughs> somebody, somebody had when this happened. It was the it was. I won't, well, I will say it. it. It was very, very strange because um, I didn't know that the lamp went across the room until there was sound of an, like an explosion. And then I thought, okay, I'm losing my mind. And when I mentioned it to a neighbor, they said, oh, you heard that too? And I said, yeah, what was that? And then I realized what happened to the lamp, which didn't make any sense to me because the the explosion that there was or the sound that there was wouldn't have, it, did, it didn't shake the house. It didn't shake anything, nothing, but the lamp went across the room. And they're telling <laughs> me that it's um, a, a member of my family. And I, I'm just trying to find out if this is really true or if I've absolutely lost my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was telling happen? you, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Susan, I was telling you about these lamps, right? Right. <laughs> can no, can I mean, that really happen? <laughs> what? That the lamp, lamp could go flying across yeah. and not break? Yeah. Well, the bottom broke. But you could repair and it, I'm, right? And I'm you repair Pardon? it easily. Yeah, the light bulb didn't even break. You know what I'm saying here? <laughs> yeah. And the lamp, the lampshade didn't get bent or dented or no. ripped or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it didn't get destroyed. Possible. Yeah. It's possible. 
Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, yes. And and is there anybody from my side of my family, or not from my side of my family, but from my family that can own up to doing this? <laughs> you mean somebody in your family, that, that you're saying somebody in the family threw the lamp? That's not Somebody here any longer. Passed on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that? No, I mean, I, 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 my feeling, my gut feeling is that that spirit did it. That yeah. It was, just, it was, it was a piece of physical phenomena. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, as yeah. I said, happens every day, but most people don't don't notice it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I so am I that, supposed to? T- Am I supposed to pay attention to it, like do something or something? No. What I was going to say to you was that um, and it was your mother's lamp. Is that correct? They were my mother's lamps, and they were given to Pat as a gift. Right. Now, and your mother's in spirit. Yes. 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 So it's your mother trying to get your attention. Okay. But I don't know what now, for. Well, there we well, go. I don't, what, I don't know what you were doing around the time when that happened. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I would kind of think back and say, well, what what were you talking about? What were you doing um, mm-hmm. around that? And I have also, because it was um, such a, a loud type of thing, um, that she mm-hmm. definitely, I would say, wants you to stop and think. About whatever it was you guys were mm-hmm. talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That it was a warning I... kind of thing that, you know, stop and give give this some thought. Oh, really? Well, because yeah. I, yeah. I, was, I was only, I was by myself. I was doing some laundry and having a cup of coffee. So there wasn't anybody but me around, mm. which, was, which was weird. And I even got up and looked around to see, okay, maybe somebody broke in or, you know. Yeah. What was going on? Right. Yeah. And you know what's interesting about it, Dr. Susan? And I think, Linda, this is for you to, you know, think about more or schedule some time with Dr. Susan is that, you know, when you look at something like that, the lamp wasn't destroyed. So there was no intention to destroy it. Right. Right. I I got this. I got the glue out and I glued the two little pieces. Right. <laughs> that were that were broken off and I put the lamp back um and I love what you said sometimes we have to just stop uh and and listen and do our best what happens if uh you know if it persists I mean there are there are many many ways that I believe that you've talked about that spirit can talk to us I would like to ask you you know what would you like to share in these last couple of minutes here with our listeners about what do we do when things like that happen? What what would our next step be? Well, um, I you know I I what I would personally what I would do is uh, if because it was your mother's lamp, I would mm-hmm. have said thanks, mom. I'm paying attention. <laughs> I love you very much. Um, I know you love me, and give it positive, you know, mm. reinforcement. Oh. The other thing is that if these things happen. You you can tell them to stop. Oh, that's you know, good. You, you can say, "Hey, look," and then it happens a lot with people sleeping. Sometimes spirits will be waking them up again and again and again, and they can just say to them, "Hey, look, I really need to sleep. Please let me sleep. I'll I'll promise I'll pay attention to you when I'm awake." Mm. Wow, you know. But just do a positive type of, of thing, you know. They're not, they're, I, I mean, if you don't believe in negative spirits, they won't come around you. Oh, that's good advice. <laughs> yeah, but if you're, if you're sitting there and you're saying, oh, my God, I'm afraid. Oh, I don't want to do a seance. There's going to be a negative spirit. I don't know what's going to happen. Then guess what? You just called in the negative spirits. Oh, wow. That's good advice. Okay. Yeah, that's so, yeah. so you have to always stay positive, always stay positive, stay in the light. And, and that's why your God network is going to be so powerful is mm, because wow. it's all positive energy, mm-hmm. positive thinking. Wow. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. You, Dr. Susan, I can't believe the hour has just zipped by. Would you take a moment again, let folks know how they can work with you directly? Um, and then I want to ask you your personal message. What would you like to leave us with? Okay. Um, they can they can get, get all my information on my website, which is um, www.spiritofficial.com spiritartgallery.net. Um, all my contact information is in there. They can email me at spiritartgallery at gmail.com. And for questions about mediumship, I also have psychicprofessors at gmail.com as a way for people to ask their questions. Awesome. Uh, and I just want to tell, yeah, I also want to tell everybody that Dr. Susan's coming back. You know, she's going to be doing a regular series with us. Also, Dr. Susan, how can people work with you directly? Um, They can just email me. We can set up an appointment. I, I do stuff through telephone. Awesome. Hey, everybody, go to the website, spiritartgallery.net. Dr. Susan is going to be back with us each month uh, and lots, lots more to come from her. Very exciting. For those of you that were not able to get on the air today, uh, we will make sure that we let you know well, well in advance on when Dr. Susan Barnes is going to be back. I'm Dr. Pat. I want to thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. Dr. Susan, wasn't this fun? Oh, yes. It was great fun. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Stay tuned. Another hour coming up on Transformation Talk Radio. You've been listening to the Psychic Professor Show with Dr. Susan Barnes, the Voices of Spirit Radio. Dr. Barnes' deep knowledge of spiritual issues provides an hour of lively talk and discussion about everything from historical facts to transcommunication. To download this show or any past shows, or to learn more about Dr. Susan and her spirit-inspired art, visit spiritartgallery.net. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.